Hi guys, this is Ari from TechShare. Um, um, very often we, you know, uh, get some sort of question from the clients or um, other people that what will happen if I already have a, a MVC site which was developed in Sitecore MVC or Sitecore SXA which is also basically an MVC thingy. Um, so how could we do that? How could we approach that sort of application to uh, the JSS, uh, because JSS is becoming so popular nowadays, right? So everybody wants to go there, but since they already have an MVC website running, so they often found a uh, sort of difficulties there. Um, so Sitecore came up some approaches here. So let me go here and check this article together. So it says that uh, statistically, um, statically sorry statistically <laughs> my bad statically generating an mpc application um which basically means is uh, if you already have an mpc application obviously we can basically generate that application to the jss one i have did that one here and then i'm going to share my experience here with you guys so number so number one this is my website that i have created and um, that was basically a mpc application and i have converted that application to the JSS and I'm I'm gonna show you guys what are those steps that I followed um, however you can basically follow this article as well but um, uh, since, you know there are some sort of difficulties here uh, so what I'll do is I'll actually uh, explain all the details to you since I already have converted this application uh, so I'm going to show you how, how that application um, sort of was looked like when it was developed in MVC. So that's why I have another tenant here where I have the same application running um, here. So if I open this application, basically then you'll, you'll see. So let me preview this application quickly. And um, then you'll see, it will take a bit time. So you can see this is basically a very simple application uh, with some content here. Uh, so what I did basically, uh, to create such application. So I was using uh, MVC, obviously SXA. That's why it was so easy for me to basically uh, create this kind of application uh, as quickly as possible. So it has basically three different components and I'm using paste content component, which is basically out of the box provided by SXA, where you can basically put your different, um, you know, um, way of creating your paste components. I used to hear, the uh, scriban way which is basically very easy you can just basically put your html and uh, you can bind your data through the data source in that scriban so what i what that looks like is let me go here and quickly show you guys so this is this application has already converted but if i go to presentation and then rendering variants and then here i have these different you know variants of my page content so in the body see here since I am going to test it, so I haven't done anything interesting. So it is, there is no sort of, you know, dynamic sort of thing. So they are all hard coded sort of HTML here and here and here. So, so what my idea is, you know, I created a page, which is basically this home page. And I have basically through the experience editor, I have put all those three components um, in the, in the main section of the placeholder. So it's basically rendered those different three variants of my page components very easily. So now if I wanna re preview, since this application has already converted to JSS, so which basically means if you go in the presentation details and if you go on, on see the final layout, then you'll see this layout is now JSS layout. That's why you cannot see this one in the experience uh, sort of, you know, you cannot preview this application, but what else we can do, we can actually test and see the layout service because since you already have converted this application, means you, you, you are using your JSS layout instead of using MVC layout. So all the data that this application serves should be, uh, you know, um, exposed in the, in the layout service. So if I go to the layout service here, which is basically here, you can see I'm using layout rendering render. And in the item, I have used this home item. And then I have an API key here. So you'll see, uh, I have basically get all the response here. So this is also important. So if you see here in the placeholders, this is the important part. Uh, in the header placeholders, I have exposed all my placeholders um, in my uh, uh, rendering service how I did that I'll let you know guys but this is the header section and this is the sort of um, 
just an another uh, placeholder the main which is actually used here so you can see here in the main it has created a lot of different html and you might be wondering why this html because we ideally expect some data coming or through passing through that uh, layout service and all the ui sort of component will be used inside the jss side of the application right but since you are actually statistic statically generating your mbc application means um you don't have any JSS application at the very beginning what you had is sort of was a mbc application so you are uh, going to the JSS side means you just just need all those components to be output the html so that you can basically render that on in the JSS side through the JSS application all right so let me show you the steps very easy the very first thing you need to do is uh, you need to find out your um, site template which basically in the for my case if I go in the project directory and here is my basically the home page you can see here and home page um, sorry the site here and you can you can see here this site basically use that um, another site template here uh, and that site is basically coming from the foundation and the foundation in the M multis mpc multi site yeah here you go so this is basically the root template of all the, all those your different site that you uh, used inside your uh, project folder right so now the very first important thing you need to do you need to make sure your app this app is basically your jss app template you need to include that template in here this is the very first thing and here it is they are also using that one here so this app you just need to include this app in your uh, site root template um, that is that is a very easy thing that the next thing is um, so the idea is we are going to statically generating my mbc application right right so now the next thing is so since you have an application means you would have had a lot of different pages and everything so we are now focusing on only the home page so in the home page you need to find out the layout and um, ideally you will have a single layout for um, all those pages but you might have different you need to treat them differently then so here i had initially i had the, that mbc layout but now i needed uh, to use the jss layout uh, well i mean let me go to the jss layout then i'll see jss layout is nothing but i created this one in the present project i have this jss layout and this layout basically means your path should be pointing to this particular css html which is mandatory you need to obviously you need to do that otherwise your um site will only be working in the statistic statically statically generating way or static way um and the other thing i told you that i have converted all of my placeholders uh, to be served as the layout service or through the layout service so that's why i have basically in the layout service i have you know um, included all those different layouts that i have within this project so if you have for example 30 different um, placeholders then you could you could basically uh, use them here in the layout service um, now that's that so the next thing you need to do is so there it's actually talking this particular thing here i just sh just showed you guys and then now uh, we need to see the the next thing is since you have done this one then what else so you need to make sure that all those placeholders that's currently you're using so for example for my case i am only using main in the main i have used some components right so you need to make sure those component uh, ideally in the JSS world you'll see the data is coming or passing through uh, your layout service but in our scenario we want to uh, be able to pass the HTML data or you can say HTML content so the component will be rendered here in the CM but I need that rendered HTML to be passed to the JSS application so that my JSS application can output them accordingly so that's why um, what we need to do is we need to make sure all the components or renderings that we are using at this moment are uh, capable of doing so so the easiest way for that is to go and execute this partial script basically very easy partial script um, so that partial script basically will take all those renderings that you have 
in, in your rendering directory which basically means in the rendering you have a lot of renders you ideally right so those uh, you can go each of them so for example if i want to go here in my feature experience accelerator and then for example i am using paste content so let me go and select the paste content for example and in here you will see there is a option checkbox that say please output the html um, uh, surrender as html which basically does is you know it will render and it will expose that rendered html to your layer service and now um since it is really hard for you guys to find each of the components and um, take this particular thing so there is an uh, there is a partial script which is available which is basically go and check everything on behalf of you once you have done that then it is the time to test your layer service so now I am testing my layout service and since you, we say, okay, include all my placeholders, we did that, we also say render as HTML, we also did that, then in that route, uh, you know, um, section, you will see all those uh, place in the placeholder, basically important, you need to see the placeholder that you've exposed here, are they coming here or not? So in my scenario, I can see I am, all those placeholders that I put here, they are all coming through here. This is first one. The second thing is, whether the content of that particular placeholder outputting the HTML or not. So you can see here, I can, it, it, they are all outputting correctly. Once you tested that on, then it means your CM side uh, work have done. What you just need is now to use that JSS layout service um, and output or use that one in your JSS application. Very simple. The next thing I did is I created a JSS application here. And then once you create JSS application, the first thing you need to do is to connect that JSS application to your CM. Uh, that we did uh, through the JSS. Uh, uh, there is a command for JSS. Uh, JSS connector. What was the command? Forget that one. Anyway, I mean, there is a way. Um, JSS setup. Yeah, I think. Yes. And then now you'll see once you put all those details parameters, then in the uh, config directory you would see something like this kind of config where you will find all those different parameters whatever that you set it would be here automatically then you need to test it right so what you can do is um, if you run this application and the other important thing is if you want to open your um, layout file because this is the file that I am using I am not using any component at this moment, any custom components at this moment. So what I'm using is, I'm just using the data that um, my layout service is serving at this moment. And then here you can see, I have basically in the layout, what I did now is, I just check if there is any route data with a placeholder name main, just render that route. If there is any footer, render that route as well. Sitecore will basically does everything for you. So it will go grab that placeholder, name main from the route and render accordingly now if you have any custom components that you create later for a certain uh, placeholder then you can also add that on there and uh, what sitecore will do is sitecore in that case will grab the component from the component directory and use that one and whatever the data that you are passing through the sitecore through the layout service basically will be connected that is sitecore's job so you don't need to worry about that one so this two line will basically make sure all the data that is coming through the rendering uh, will be accordingly rendered. So let me quickly run this one and see what does that work. What does that work? I mean, does that work or not? So let me run start connected. So here I have done nothing fancy. It's just simple sort of thing in the JSS side. So now let me go. It's done here and now if I open localhost, uh, sorry, not here. If I go and open, um, this is the one basically. And I am, I need to clear this one here and see, um, oh, wow, voila, it is just outputting everything as expected. Now you can see uh, here, uh, let me expand that layout data that I consoled um, in the route placeholders which is the important part and in the main because that what i said here that grab the main footer i don't have anything i can remove that one eventually but in the main you can see here is there anything here in the content yeah 
So this is basically the one which is outputting at this moment here in the browser. Uh, it's a very big sort of chunk of HTML content here, which is basically outputting here. Now, a question might arise that, okay, what will happen those resources that I have, I'm using in my site core, um, in my media, through the media library? Well, that is the issue. So you might not get those resources here because they are site code, right? But you are using JSS. So in that case, what you need to make sure is you are using a relative path of your assets, not the, not through the, uh, well. Um, okay, ah, there you go. So it says that um, modify the source page and layout file to include your front end assets. So, which basically means is the assets that you have in the CM side, you also need to make sure they are correctly handled in the JSS application by adding those assets in that in that JSS application. Um, it, you know, in that places uh, or relative places that you want to be. That's the thing I've uh, sort of you know um, used here. Um, so this is important. You have must matching layouts and access to the resources of the MVC app, such as styles and scripts. So it is your responsibility uh, how you basically map or use your you know layout and uh, sorry CSS and other assets. So you have to make sure you are also using the same sort of relative path uh, for those. CSS and assets in your JSS application. So what I did is for that, I simply put all those assets in my public directory because I was using similar sort of approaches here. So they are all getting through here, resolving through here. And I'm also outputting my responses here so, you can, so that I can see what is going on there. And uh, yeah, I can see my site is running and it is now th serving through next means very, very fast. What I can how, how I can say that? So if you see, if I refresh now, you would not see any uh, sort of GraphQL call or anything such. They are all basically serving through my um, static files. So they are using SSG, so, you know. So I think that's helpful. Um, this is the article. I'm going to put this article link in the details uh, section of my YouTube. So you can you can have a look, and if you have any questions, then let me know. Um, I don't think there should be any any uh, any difficulties, but if you have, then let me know. This that's so straightforward. I think the next video I need to make another video. This video is going to be very big if I include that, which is basically now we have a statistic static gener, you know website um, sort of thing in the JSS side. But now what you want is to make sure your static set. Uh, site is being dynamic, which basically means is you want to be able to create your different components in the JSS site and sort of, you know, publish that thingy to your um, to your main site through the JSS. Basically, the main way, I mean, how why we use this is because we want our front end component and everything to be created in the JSS site or in the JavaScript site. So that we'll do in the next article with this site so that we'll we will be able to make this static site to sort of a dynamic sort of you know behavior means extending it and adding your dynamic components uh, if that's possible so i'll show you that one in my next article or next video till then have a good night and bye bye